Hey everyone, in this video, let's work on an SQL case study. As part of this case study, first we will try to download the data set from Kaggle. Once we have the data set, we'll then try to upload it into our database using a very simple Python script. Once we have the data available, we'll try to analyze it and then we will try to solve around 20 plus SQL queries as part of this SQL case study. Now you can call this like a case study or you can call it like an SQL project. But basically, if you want to solve basic to intermediate level of SQL queries, then this is pretty perfect. Now, of course, I will not be able to solve all the 20 plus SQL queries as part of this video because then the video is going to be very long. But rather, I'll take a handful of the queries and I'll try to solve it during this video. But for all the remaining SQL queries, the data set, the scripts and everything else, you will find it in my blog. I'll leave the link in the video description. Let's start. Okay, so first of all, let's take our data set from Kaggle. I will leave this link in the description so you can go through this link and download the data set yourself. Now, the name is Famous Paintings. It's given by Maxwell. And I think he has taken this data set from Data World. He has mentioned that details here. Okay. Now, if I go down, you can see that this data set has eight different files and it has information about artists, paintings, museums, etc. The first thing that we will do is click on the download so that all these eight CSV files are downloaded into our system. Now, I have already downloaded them and I have placed them in one of my folders. Okay. Now, the next thing that we need to do is I have the data downloaded from Kaggle. Now I need to load this data into our database. Now there are two ways I can do this. One is I can go into my database. Now I'm using PostgreSQL database and I'm using this PG admin tool. Of course, you can use any other database of your choice. Okay. So the first choice is that I create all of these eight tables. So one table for each of the CSV file. And then I do an import into each of these tables. Okay, so I can simply do an import, just right click on the table. I find the table under the schemas. And let's say I go under public here, I go into the tables. And okay, currently I have not created any of the tables. But if the tables are created, it would show up here and then just right click and you would have an option to import the data from the CSV file. Okay, you can do that. The problem with that is you have to manually create the table scripts. And you need to manually import one by one uh, the data for each table. Okay. Now, a better way or a more faster way is just by using a Python script. Okay. So, using Python, I can upload all of this CSV data. I can basically take it into a Python a Pandas data frame and then I can move it into any database. Okay. So, I'm just going to quickly show you how to do that. Okay. So, let me go into my VS code. So, I'm using the Visual Studio Code uh, editor that is ID. And I'll just quickly show you how you can do this. Okay, so it's very simple. Even if you don't know how to use Python, trust me, just watch how I'm going to write this script and you will understand everything. Okay, so the first thing is I told you whenever you want to load data from a CSV file into Python. So we first load data from CSV into Python and then from Python into the database. Okay, so how do you load it into a Python? So that is by using uh, one of the modules in Python called as pandas. Okay, so first of all, I need a couple of modules uh, in order to do this uh, operation. So I need pandas, so I can just tell import pandas as pd. Secondly, I need a module that can connect my Python into my PostgreSQL database, right? In order to do that, I'm going to use SQL Alchemy uh, package. Okay, so I'm just going to say from SQL Alchemy import because I only need one particular function from this module and that is uh, create engine. Okay. So these are the only two modules that I need in order to perform this action. Okay. So the first thing is I want to connect my Python into the PostgreSQL database. So I need to kind of provide the URL or the connection string. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say connection string. It's just a variable which is going to store the URL or uh, the connection details to my PostgreSQL database. So my database name is PostgreSQL. Okay. Then, then I say colon double slash similar to any URL. Okay. And then you provide the username. Okay. Now I'm using the default username in Postgres and that is Postgres and its default password is admin. Okay. Then the host is localhost because it is on my system. And then the database name that I need, okay, I need to provide a database where this data is going to be stored. So what I'm going to do is, I'll go into my PG admin here, okay, and you can see that I have already created one new database by the name painting. Currently that database is empty, even though I have mentioned all of these eight tables with their count here, 
I have not created any of these tables. Okay, this is just so that I can quickly show you all the eight tables. Okay, so this is a database that we'll be using by the name painting. So I'll go back into my Python and here I'll just tell painting. Okay, this is the database name. Okay, that's it. So this is my connection string. This will be used by SQL Alchemy to kind of create the engine and then we will do the connection. Okay, so the next thing is to kind of create the engine. For that, I'm just going to say db equal to create engine and create engine and I'm just going to say connection string. Okay, and finally, I just need to connect into my uh, database. Okay, I need to create the connection. So I'll store that connection into a variable called uh, con connection. Okay, and I'll say db dot connect. That's it. Okay, so these are, I'll just remove this. So these are the only five lines of code that you need to connect your Python to PostgreSQL database. Okay, now I'll just execute this. If everything is fine, then we will not get any error. But if there was some issues with the connection, then you would basically see some error. You can see that I have not got any error. That means everything looks fine and the connection was successful. Okay, so I have built the connection from Python to my uh, PostgreSQL database. The next thing is, I need to load the CSV data, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say data frame that is DF is equal to PD dot uh, read CSV. Okay. Now PD is the pandas uh, module or the package and pandas has one uh, function by the name read CSV. This is you basically provide uh, the file okay with the path and it will read that file data and put it into this data frame okay this variable okay so i'll just provide the whole path so if i go back to my system where this file is present let's say i'll just do uh, i'll just copy this whole path okay and i'll just come back to my python i'll put the whole path and do a slash and the file name is artist.csv okay so that's it. So this will basically read all the data from the CSV file and put it into data frame. If you want to verify that, what we can do is I'll just say print df dot info. Okay. And let me now execute this. So if I execute this, you can see that it's kind of displaying some sample data. Okay. So these are all the different column values uh, are displayed here. More importantly, you can see the last line 421 rows and nine columns. So from this particular file, that is artist.csv, 421 rows are loaded and nine columns are taken. Okay. So that is what we wanted. So you can see that the data is loaded into our data frame. Next, whatever data is present in this data frame, I need to load it into an SQL table, a PostgreSQL table. So in order to do that, what I can do is I can just tell df dot to SQL. Okay. So this DF is basically my data frame. It has a function that is by the name to SQL, which kind of loads the data data from the data frame into an SQL table. So I need to provide a few arguments here. The first argument is a table name where I want to load it. So I will call this like artist because this file is artist, right? So I'll create a table also with the same name as the file name. Okay. So the first column or the first argument is the table name. The second argument is the connection. So I'm going to provide this connection string because my database connection is stored into this variable. So I'll just provide this variable here. Okay. This con is basically the parameter name. Okay. And then the third argument is what happens if the table already exists? Then I will provide a statement here saying that if exist, if the table already exists, then replace it. Okay. Kind of like I'm trying to overwrite the existing table. Okay. And the last argument is, you know, in pandas, we have by default, there will be indexes. So I do not want when this table is getting created, I do not want the indexes to be considered. Okay. So I will just say index equal to false. Okay. So that's it. These are the only four details that you need to provide when you're loading data, data from data frame into an SQL table. Okay. So now if I just run this, okay, before I run this, let's see if this table artist is present in my database. Okay. I have connected to my painting database. You can see that this table does not exist. Now I'll just go here and I'll just run this. And you can see that there are no errors. If I go back into my database and if I run this, now you can see that the data is present here. Okay. The table is created. So 421 rows and all the columns are loaded. This is how easy it was. I didn't have to create the table myself. Everything was done by Python within like one or two lines here, right? Now this is fine just for one file, but I have eight different files. So I can do two different things here. Either 
I can repeat these two lines of code eight different times, one for each file. Or what I can do is I can put this into a loop and do everything at once, okay? Of course, we'll try to do it everything at once using a loop. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a list here and I'm just going to provide all the eight file names, okay? So I'll just quickly do this. Okay, so I have just created uh, a list and stored it into this variable files. It has eight values. These are basically the file names, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a loop. I'm just going to say for file in files, okay? So that I can loop through each of these files, okay? And inside each of this loop, I am just going to perform the same thing, okay? So this is my whole path, but the file name will change for each file, right? So this, I want to change it uh, in each iteration. So what I'll do is, I'll just use a F string here, okay? And then instead of this artist, I will just remove this and I'll just use the F string format, okay? And here I'll just tell file, okay? What is this file? This is basically the iterator. In each iteration, it's going to get the value from the list, okay? So, so the first iteration, it will be file, second iteration, it will be canvas size, etc. okay? So this is the file name dot CSV, okay? So hopefully this should basically take different files in each iteration, okay? Once I have taken that, then the table name also should be the same as the file name. So what I'll do is I'll use, instead of use hard coding the file name here, I'll use this iterator variable, okay? So that's it. So hopefully when I run this script now, it should create all the eight tables, okay? Just to verify, I'll just see that we have created artists, but all the other tables, you can see that it's not present, right? Now, let me just run this whole Python script and let's see if it actually works. And you can see that it hardly took a few seconds, maybe two, three seconds and it is done. Let's go back into our Python script. Artist table, it's done. You can see that it has all the data. Canvas size is also loaded. Image link is the third file. It is also loaded. Then we have museum hours. Then we have museum. Then we have product size. Then we have subject. And finally, we have the work table. You can see that so easily just by using like what hardly 10 lines of Python code, we were able to load all the data from CSV file into a PostgreSQL database. So I hope this was clear. Of course, all of the scripts will be present in my blog. You can use it, okay? Now let's proceed. So we have taken the data and we have loaded it into our database, okay? Now before we can solve some SQL problems, I let's try to spend some time in understanding what exactly uh, what kind of data do we exactly have, okay? So first of all, let's go one table at a time. We have the artist table. This table, as you can imagine, it's information about the different artists, okay? So their name, their nationality, the style of uh, paintings that they do, uh, and some other information about them is present in the artist table. Then there is a canvas size table. It basically provides information about the canva that is being used for each painting, okay? Now, what is a canva? You can consider it to be like a painting board where the paintings are done, okay? And the size of that is mentioned in this table, okay? Then there is an image link table. It basically has the URL for all the different paintings. Unfortunately, none of these URLs work, okay? If it was proper, then probably we could have seen the paintings that we were talking about here, okay? But I think none of these URLs are actually working, okay? So the next table that we have is museum hours. This basically tells, uh, so there is a table called as museum. Okay, let's first go there. And you can see that we have, I think, 57 different museums, the name of the museum, its address, in which city is it, is it present, in which country it's present, etc. is present here, okay? And then the, the time when the museums are open, on which day is it open, which time it starts, and which time the museum closes is all present in the museum hours table, okay? Then we have the product size. It's basically, uh, so the first column here is work ID. Now, what basically work ID means is, uh, a work is basically one painting, okay? One painting is considered like one work, okay? So it's the ID of a work or a painting. Then the painting was done on which Canva and then the sale price and the regular price. Now, what exactly does this sale price and regular price mean? Now, this is not actually the price the painting was sold for because none of these paintings are sold. They're all present in the museum, okay? But they are available for selling, okay? So what this means is the actual price of the painting is this regular price. And the price which is basically listed in the museum for sale is basically the sale price. So for example, let's say if I consider uh, this painting, okay, the painting 
I don't know this particular painting. You can see that the regular price is one two seven five, maybe dollars. Okay, but its sale price is six seven five. That means the painting's actual cost is one two seven five. But in the museum, it has been displayed and it is its asking price is six seventy five dollars. Okay, so this is what basically it means. It's not the sold price. It's basically the asking price. Okay, this is what I understand from my analysis. None of this was explained in the Kaggle or in uh, Data World. So just by looking at the data, this is what I could understand. Okay, if you have a different understanding, let me know in the comments below. Then we have a subject table. It basically tells for each of the painting what uh, what is this painting about. Okay, this painting is about horses or marine art, etc. Okay, then there is. a uh, last table that is work it basically has information about the painting so what is the name of the painting the artist who drew that painting what style this painting belongs to and in which museum is this painting displayed in okay so this is everything about the data set that we have okay now once you understand this data then you are ready to basically solve some problems using this data set okay now i have come up with around 22 different problems as you can see here so i have uh, some basic problems some intermediate level problems but we have 22 different problems that i would like to answer so, so don't treat it like a problem it is like these are certain questions that anyone can ask about this paintings and museums data set and if you can answer these queries then you kind of are answering the different questions that anyone could have about these paintings okay so now i cannot solve all the 22 problems in this video because i am sure now itself the video has stretched along but i'll try to solve maybe two or three sql problems okay so let's start with the problem number 10 okay so what i'm going to do is i'll go into my postgresql i have these tables created here right and i'll just put the problem number uh, 10 here okay and just to create some space i'll just move this to the left and i'll just expand this okay now the problem basically states identify the museums which are open on both sunday and monday okay display the museum name and the city okay so we want to know which are the museums which are open both on sunday and monday not just on sunday but both on sunday and monday now as soon as you look at this problem the first thing that i think should come to your mind is in which table we can find information about the opening of a museum okay which day it is open etc so we know that there is a table called as museum hours and if i if i just minimize this you can see that in museum hours table we have information for each museum on which day it is open right so i think in order to solve this problem we probably need to use this table okay so i'm just going to say museum hours here okay and then let's say i'm just going to say where day equal to sunday okay so if i run this now you can see that i think totally if you see here we have 57 museums okay and in this museum hours we have 351 rows it's because for each museum it might be open on multiple days so there are multiple records okay but in general we have 57 museums and if i see that which are the museums which are open on sunday okay how do i know if it is open on sunday because here it, this is basically the information when the museums are open okay and the day basically indicates on which day the museum was open okay here i can see that out of 57 56 museums are open on sunday okay and same way if i see for monday so out of 57 museums how many museums are open on monday i can see only 29 okay now what i need to find is among these museums which are the museums which are open on both these days sunday and monday okay so how do i do that so first of all i put the sunday uh, here so i get 57 okay the next thing what i can do is i put another condition here so i can just tell among these 56 museums i want to check only for these 56 museums which are also present on monday okay so i put an exist statement here okay and i write my query select one from the same table that is museum hours and let's say i'm just going to call it like mh2 and this will be mh1 okay and then i want to join these two tables so i'm just going to say where uh, mh2 dot museum id equal to mh1 dot museum id okay so what i what exactly i'm trying to do is from this outer query i have got 56 museums which are open on sunday for these 56 i want to also check if they are also present on monday 
right? So this inner query is basically for the other day, that is Monday. So here I need to put a filter condition saying that where mh2.day is equal to Monday, okay? And now if I run this, I'm getting 28, okay? So 28 are the museums. There are totally 28 museums which are open both on Sunday and Monday, okay? I hope you understand the concept. Initially, I took all the museums which are open only on Sunday for only for these museum IDs, okay? So I took the museum IDs of this MH1 museum ID and for these 56 museum IDs, I checked in again in that same table, but for a different day, that is for Monday, okay? And this condition only matched with 28 rows, okay, 28 museums. And that is why there are only 28 museums which are present both on Sunday and Monday, okay. Now, this is basically what I wanted. Additionally, the query tells me that I need to display the museum name and the city. So, if I want to do that, I can just join this museum hours table with the museum table. I'll call it like M and I'll put the join condition like M dot museum ID is equal to MH1 dot MH1 dot museum ID. Okay, and then I can just print the values here. I'll say m dot name as museum name, and then it's the city, right? So I'll just tell m dot state or okay, m dot city, right? So if I just run this, now you can see that these are the 28 museums, the name of the museum and the city in which these are present. Okay, so I hope this problem was interesting and you were able to understand it. Now let's move on to some other problem that we'll try to solve. So we have solved problem number 10. Maybe let's take problem number 15. Okay. So in order to solve problem number 15, I'll go back here and let's say I'll put it here. Okay. Now, what do I have? So let me just, okay. So the problem number 15 basically states, uh, maybe I'll just move this down just so that it's clear. Which museum is open for the longest during a day? Okay, so they want to know which is the museum that is open for the longest during a day. Okay, display the museum name, state, hours open and which day. Okay, so first of all, how do I know or in which table can I get information about the opening uh, like on how, how long the museum has been open in a day and that information is I can get it from the museum hours table, right? In the museum hours table, I know what is the open time and the close time. So if I just run that here, you can see that for each museum along with the day, it also tells me at which time it opens and at which time it closes, okay? Now, ideally, if I want to find the duration, I could just minus like close time minus the open time, I should get the duration, right? So let's see if that actually works. So I'll just do one thing. I'll just uh, move this to the right and here I'll just tell close minus open and let's see if this works. It actually does not work because I'm trying to subtract a text with a text. Okay. So if you did not notice, if I just show you this query again, you can see that I have the open time and the close time. It looks like a time, but the data type of this is actually a text. Okay. So text or you could call it something like a varchar. Okay. So First and foremost, I need to convert this data type into a time data type, okay? That is like a timestamp data type. So what I can do is here, I'll just maybe instead of subtracting here, first of all, let us try to convert it. So I'll just use a function to timestamp, okay? Which is available in PostgreSQL to timestamp. And I just provide the value and then I provide the format, okay, of my time. So my time is present in the format like uh, this is, hours, HH, H, and then minutes, and then whether AM or PM. So I'll just provide AM, okay? And I'm just going to call it like open time, okay? And I will do the same for the close, okay? Okay, so this is open and this is close, and I'll just call it like close. And the close time is actually PM. You can see that it is PM here, right? So now if I run this, <laughs> now we can see that I have converted my text into a timestamp, okay? You can ignore the date and the seconds here. We don't need that. The only thing that we are interested in is the hours and the minutes, right? So what I'll do is once I have this, now I can do the subtraction. So in order to get the duration, so I can just tell to uh, the close time minus the open time. So I'll just copy this whole thing, okay? And I'm going to give an alias for this, like let's say duration, okay? And now if I just run this, 
Now you can see that I am getting the duration. So this basically means seven hours. So you can see that this museum was open at 10.30 a.m. and closed at 5.30 p.m. So if you subtract 5.30 p.m. and 10.30 a.m., you should get seven hours. And that is what I'm getting here, okay? There are some museums with eight and a half hours open, etc. okay? So I have got the duration. Now, if I go back to my query, what I'm actually looking for is which museum is open for the longest during a day, okay? So which is open for the maximum number of hours during a day, right? In order to do that, what I'll do is I'll just use a rank window function. I'm just going to say rank over order by and I want to order by the duration. So I'll just copy this whole thing and I'll just, maybe I'll just put this inside the parenthesis, okay? And I'll do a descending order, okay? And I'm going to call this like rank. So if I just run this now, now you can see that it's basically sorted depending on whose duration is the most. And you can see that there is one museum with the ID 40. It is open for 12 hours, 45 minutes in a day, okay? And that is number one right so that is basically the information that i'm interested in which museum is open for the longest during the day and that is this particular museum which is open for 12 hours 45 minutes okay now i have got that and i basically don't need to display all the other museums now that one i can eliminate very easily just by using the filter based on the rank okay additionally i also need to display the information about the museum name state etc so in order to do that i will join this with the museum table and I'm going to give an alias here. This is MH and M. And I'll say M dot museum ID equal to MH dot museum ID. Okay. And then here I'll just say M dot name as museum name and then M dot state. And I think we need MH dot day. Right. And this is the duration. Right. And yeah, I think that's probably all. And if I run this, now you can see that the museum is, okay, but I also need to filter only for one particular uh, where the rank is one because I am only, only interested in the museum that is open for the longest time. I, I don't need information about everything else, right? In order to do that, I can just put a subquery. I can use a subquery. So I can just tell select star uh, from, and I'll just move this to the right. And I'll just use an alias here and I'll say where x dot rnk equal to 1. And if I just run this whole query, now you can see that I'm only getting information or the data for one particular museum. The museum name is mentioned here. It's in Paris. It's on Friday. It's open for 12 hours, 45 minutes. Okay. So this is basically the solution to my problem number 15. Okay. I hope this is clear. Now let's conclude this video with solving one last query. So I'll just go back here and maybe I'll try to solve the problem number 18. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just, uh, I'll just go into my PostgreSQL and I'll put it here. So I have my problem number 18. Okay. Now the problem number 18 basically tells display the country and the city with the most number of museums. Okay. So I want to know which country has the most number of museums and I also want to know which city has the most number of museums. Output two separate columns to mention the city and country. So city should be in one column and country should be in the another column. If there are multiple values, separate them with a comma. Okay. So first of all, how do you solve this? Let's solve it like one by one, right? We first try to find the highest number of museums in a the country. Then we try to find the highest number of museums in a city. How do you, which table does uh, which table has this information? It's basically the museum table, right? Because in the museum table, we have information about the museum name, its address, its country, its city, etc. Right? So in order to find which museum, uh, which country has the highest number of museums, I can just use a group by here. I can tell group by country and I can say country comma count of one. Okay. And here I can just tell order by count of one in descending order. If I run this, you can see that in USA, there are 25. So there are basically out of the 57 records present in the museum table, each record indicates one museum. 25 record belongs to USA. That means 25 museums are present in USA. Okay. So this is what I have got for the highest uh, museums present in a country. Now let's go for a city. So instead of country, I'll just put a city here. And now if I run this, 
Now you can see that I think there are four different cities which has highest number of museums. So London, Washington, DC, I think, New York and Paris, all four are, are having three museums each. So what this means is we have information that we need to solve this problem in two different queries, right? The highest number of uh, museums in a country is present here. The highest number of museums in a city is present from this, is getting from this query, right? We basically need to bring these two queries together. Now, there are few different ways you could do that. One of the easier way that I can think of is just by using a CTE. So I can just tell which CTE, let's say I'll create two different cities. For country, I'll create uh, the city country, city underscore country. I don't need an order by inside a city, so I'll remove that, okay? And I'll put this whole thing here. But I also need to only find the country which has the most number of museum, right? If I run this query, I'll get every country information. I only need the country with the highest number of museums. So in order to fetch that, I'll use a rank window function, okay? So I'll say rank over order by count of one in descending order, and this is going to be my rank, okay? Now, if I run this inner query, you can see that the first row is going to be the one that I'm actually interested in, okay? Now, I'm going to create another city. So this is my first city, and my second city is going to be for the city, and I'm going to use the same query that I have here. I'll just move this to the right, and maybe I'll just move this to the right as well, just to make it neat. And I don't need the order by here. I'll remove that, but I do need this rank, okay, for the city as well, and I'll put it here, okay, and everything else stays the same. And then finally, maybe I'll just zoom this query a bit, uh, okay, here. So I'll just keep it here. So, and finally, I have both of these queries here. I need to bring them together. So I'm just going to say select from CTE country and join it with CTE city, okay. Now, the problem is, how do I join this query with this query? Because there is nothing common here, right? This is about country and this is about city, they'll never join. So if I don't have a join condition, one way I can join it is by using the cross join, okay? So I'll do a cross join here and then I'll just display the data that I need. So I want country and I want city, right? And I want to fetch only when the rank is one, only for the number one country and the number one city with the highest number of museums. So I'll put a filter condition here saying that where, let's say I'll use the same table name, city dot uh, rnk equal to one. And I'll copy the same thing and I'll call it like city and this is going to be and it will be one, okay? So if I run this and I think I need to zoom in a bit. Let me zoom in a bit. So I have executed this query. Maybe I'll just go down. Okay, here. I have executed this query and you can see that I'm getting these four records, okay? Because there were four different cities and I did a cross join for each of that record. Uh, the data from the first table also got joined, okay? Even though the first table here, that is city country only had one record. Now, additionally, as part of our query, we were also asked if there are multiple values, separate them with a comma. So here we have multiple cities, right? with the same number of highest uh, museums. So I need to, instead of having them like row wise, I need to combine them comma separated values, right? In order to do that, what I can do is I can use an aggregate function that is string underscore aggregate, okay? And here I can just tell the separator to be a comma, okay? And I'll call it like a city, okay? And since I'm using aggregate function here, all the other columns also needs to have that aggregation. So I'll use that here and I'll say comma, and I'll call it like country, okay? And now if I just run the whole query, okay? And if I just run this whole query, now you can see that I'm getting the four different cities comma separated, but the countries are also getting repeated. So in order to like eliminate that repetition, I can use a distinct inside the string aggregation. And if I run the query now, now I will get the final output that I wanted. So the, the country with the highest number of museums is USA and the city with the highest number of museums are London, Washington, um, New York and Paris. So this is basically the solution to the problem number 18. I hope you like this video. If yes, then give me a like on this video, subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments below if you would want me to make more such interesting videos on any other SQL case study. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next one. Bye.